Thank you. Thank you, Lincoln. Um, so, yes, as I was saying, I'm Tim Carey. I'm with uh, Nokia. Uh, I'm also the OBBA project chair. And so uh, I was asked to uh, give an update on some of the work that the Broadband Forum has been doing in the SDN uh, NFE work area, uh, as well as, you know, provide some updates on what was happening with the OBBA project. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, a lot of work that's been happening within um, the uh, the broadband forum within uh, the, the SDN NFE work area. So much that uh, I actually had to kind of break it down into um, uh, five different uh, initiatives that, um, that that you see before you, uh, where we're doing work on uh, the cloud central office as the foundational work for for other initiatives that are happening within the SDN uh, NFE area. Uh, this incorporates, uh, you know, the SDN and NFE uh, capabilities that are that are needed uh, and specified through our TR384 um, uh, specification. That also has a bunch of follow-on specifications that we can get into later. Uh, then also talking about some of the new initiatives that that kind of spun out uh, as well uh, recently uh, this year uh, for uh, dealing with the automation and intelligence of the home and access network. Uh, then also talk a little bit about more uh, on some of the uh, disaggregation of network functions uh, that we're doing uh, within um, uh, within the access network specifically, um, and then uh, also talk a little bit about what's happening up in the uh, the, uh, the the edge network when we talk about uh, the subscriber traffic steering, uh, and, and in addition to that, uh, some investigation that we've been doing in the edge. Uh, related to metro computing networking, uh, how we can tie that edge together in, in, into a mesh. And then finally, just circle back and talk a little bit about some of the roadmaps uh, that are in the uh, the SDN NFE uh, area as well as the OBBA area. So uh, when we talk about the, the, the cloud CO, it's really a transformation of the central office uh, where uh, functions themselves primarily were locked into whether it's the BNG or the OLT or 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 the uh, or the DSLAM, uh, they were locked into those uh, those entities themselves. And what the central office program does with an SDN uh, SDN and a fee work area is it takes those functions and it moves them uh, and virtualizes them and moves them into the cloud. Uh, to go along with that, uh, there's some needs for some management and control functions uh, that you're able to uh, abstract out and automate uh, via the functionality of which you can abstract out and automate via portals, uh, the northbound interfaces and the orchestration and control functions. Uh, what that does is it, it, is it allows for uh, you to use uh, these en enabling technologies of SDN and FE uh, that are actually uh, developed through open source communities, uh, be able to use some of the uh, open APIs, the standard data models and specifications, similar to what um, uh, Jason was referring to within uh, within USP, some of the benefits of it. You can see this within the cloud CO uh, world as well. Um, what you see on the right-hand screen here is, is really a simplification of, of that uh, TR384 framework. I call it a simplification because uh, the whole idea of the Cloud CL program uh, is to uh, create uh, specifications for, for various network functions or, or components of, of, the, uh, of the SDN management and control uh, functionality or the NFVI uh, infrastructure. Uh, and, and then around that, uh, build the appropriate APIs, uh, specifications, and, and data models. Uh, and so when you really look at this simplified architecture and you blow it out into the more complex one, you see these interfaces start to be defined uh, through the various, uh, uh, between the various uh, components uh, or functions of, of, of the Cloud CO. And you see that what we've done is we've taken these interfaces and we start developing specifications uh, related to those interfaces. You can see, for example, TR413 uh, deals with the management uh, interfaces for uh, the, uh, the the provisioning configuration of the uh, of the network function, as well as the uh, whatever uh, uh, flow control or, or, or control plane functionality that would be associated with that network function. Um, and you can see in WT411, we talk about uh, interfaces that would happen between like an orchestration function and an SDM management control function. But the idea is, is again, 
uh, that we what that we for the various network functions that comprise the cloud CO, we can come up with a set of standardized interfaces. And what that does is it allows the industry to develop uh, network functions themselves or components uh, that are interoperable and, and multi-vendor uh, and it allows that ecosystem to flourish. Uh, and we've seen this and actually in, in some of the uh, work that we've done within uh, the Broadband World Forum, we've done cloud CO demonstrations. I believe Lincoln discussed this earlier on um, uh, for the last couple of years. And, and for example, in uh, the, the last uh, Broadband World Forum in 2020, uh, we actually took nine different vendors, uh, four, old, uh, four of them were OLT vendors and four service providers that were involved in the production of, uh, of the demonstration. Uh, that showed how broadband services can be used within the Cloud CO framework. For the access network, what we showed was uh, the, the actually taking that standard that had that standard interface and uh, as well as an open source reference implementation from OBBA and some new functionalities for standards that were coming online like virtual OMCI. And we showed how we can have standard uh, OLT multi-vendor uh, reacting to the same uh, commands that came from, uh, from, from an SDN management and control system, right? So they reacted just the same way. Uh, we also then took uh, a white box approach, a commodity white box uh, and uh, SDN white box, and we've integrated that into the demonstration as well. And it just looked like any other OLT vendor. So it was a very powerful way of showing how these open interfaces that were done through these specifications in Cloud CO can be used to, to make that multi-vendor uh, ecosystem flourish. Um, what we also did was we, we took at the premises, we incorporated a premises controller uh, as well as uh, uh, a, a Wi-Fi controller uh, using USP uh, and we showed how uh, Wi-Fi troubleshooting can be done within the home and that can be accomplished within the framework. And that's kind of important when we start talking about some of this new work uh, that's happening within, uh, within, the cloud, uh, within the SDN NFE work area, uh, where we're now focusing on primarily what we were focusing on before was how do I do service provisioning and activation? And now we're moving to say, well, how do I do monitoring and troubleshooting, right? Uh, and what's the framework look like for that? And that's all involved within this new work uh, that's been happening, uh, a pro project stream within the broadband forum that calls the automated OEM of the home and access network. Uh, and the, the framework by which uh, that, uh, that particular work will be done is done in a specification called WT436. It's currently in the publication cycle within the broadband forum. Um, and so this framework, what it does is it integrates the uh, closed loop automation aspects uh, and others of how I do monitoring and troubleshooting uh, within an SDN NFB environment, right, for microservices and network functions. Uh, one of the important points, uh, again, that came out of that when we looked at the framework was that there, we needed this common representation uh, of, data, of data that uh, decision elements can act upon. Uh, and that became why, uh, that was one of the prime reasons why uh, data models that define the access in the home networks, whether it's a TR81 data model or a Yang data model, they become important uh, in order to avoid uh, adaptation, which, which again, anytime you have to adapt something, it becomes more and more error prone. But that's an interesting work uh, that's going through the publication cycle that again, uh, now that the framework was being out and being published, we'll start working on the interface specifications for the various functions. Um, the third area was uh, talking about this disaggregation of the uh, uh, of the various functions that comprise the uh, the nodes. Uh, in this case, we're working uh, on the access nodes themselves, whether they're OLTs or DSLAMs, and looking at uh, how do we disaggregate? Uh, what are the functions that need to be disaggregated outside the, those uh, those elements? And we see this in the uh, in two uh, specifications uh, that are that are currently uh, being uh, actively developed uh, now. Uh, probably within the last six months, I think we started. Uh, that's WT-477, which talks about the disaggregated OLT. Uh, and then there's WT-484, which is talking about disaggregation for, uh, for access nodes in general, uh, really becoming a, a specification for the BAA layer uh, that's, in the, um, uh, that's in the Cloud CO uh, framework. 
and so those are two two major areas that where we talk about how do we know what functions we want to disaggregate in the access network. Uh, how does that disaggregation look like? What are the protocols that we use for disaggregation? Uh, one of the big proof points that we have for these uh, for these specifications is really how we integrate ONFs Volta into the cloud CO. Uh, and, and so so that is kind of, uh, we'll know we're successful when we can come up with a way of taking an open source project like ONFs Volta and we integrate that into the cloud CO uh, framework utilizing uh, standard and uh, standard interfaces, protocols, uh, and APIs. Uh, one of the important things that uh, come out of the access network is, you know, of course, these uh, data models are represented uh, within uh, using Yang as a common representation for the network functions, uh, as well as the SDN uh, management control uh, interfaces. So what you see is a lot of data models that are going to be developed uh, you know, uh, through the uh, through the specification works of these of these various pieces, um, or identified. Not necessarily always just have to be built from the ground up. You can identify the data model because there's many different uh, organizations uh, working on data models. Whether you're talking about uh, uh, organizations like IETF or IEEE or even in the BBF or even open source uh, organizations that are building uh, data models for. Uh, for BNGs, for example, right? Um, the fourth piece of, that we were talking about was the subscriber session steering, uh, which is uh, WT474. And that really falls on some of the work that was done from our ATA group, uh, work area group, where they started to do the control and user plane separation uh, in, in the work that's in TR459, where they said, okay, I've gonna, I gotta separate the control plane of a BNG from uh, from from the user planes of the BNG, where I can have a centralized control plane, and I can have any number of distributed user planes. Uh, one of the points that came out was is that really, in order to make that successful, uh, we really needed to figure out how we could um, uh, steer uh, subscriber traffic uh, that can go to the various user plane functions uh, that were in the BNG. And so this is part of that uh, that work effort. Um, uh, one, some of the benefits that came out of that was now um, you would be able to uh, have service providers would be able to differentiate the services uh, that they can offer to individual uh, customers. Uh, they can do this dynamically so that they can be uh, connected. Uh, they can have differentiation of the, uh, uh, of the subscribers because they can be steered to suitable user plane functions uh, that, are, that are based upon different LS SLAs. Uh, the network operators also can use this to be able to have tools that allows them to manage and upgrade their networks, uh, particularly as the industry moves to, towards using SDNNFE. You can, you can imagine you can take um, a, a set of subscribers and you can move them off to, uh, off to a, a new user plane while you're upgrading the old one. Uh, you can do it as a canary in a coal mine type of thing where you want to do some testing on a number of subscribers and you want to move them off into this test scenario. The idea of the subscriber session steering is that it's done uh, dynamically and, and it's done uh, uh, easily. Um, the other point that it, it, that it does is that it responds to the need to reduce power uh, usage. Uh, so you can imagine that uh, if part of your uh, network is, is, is lightly loaded, uh, you can move those subscribers off uh, to, to a place that has more capacity and you can uh, then save power in those lightly uh, used uh, data centers. Um, as we we're saying that we're not only are we working on you know uh, the, those existing uh, uh, programs that we that we talked about before, but we're also investigating uh, some some newer pieces, uh, particularly around the edge computing, because we realize that the edge computing, at least for the for for the foreseeable future, is and maybe forever will be a, a sparse type of um, uh, a sparse a sparse type of usage, right? Uh, where it will be not as highly loaded or highly dense as you see in, in regional and center computings. I look at it like uh, SETI was, uh, where, where we were doing uh, the search for extra, extra, extraterrestrials, where uh, before they would, uh, you know, the great idea that they had that they would use people's home PCs while they weren't on use, uh, weren't being used, and, and be able to use that to search for extraterrestrials. 
uh, well, this is, uses that same concept where you have all these edge locations that might be underutilized that you may very well need to utilize for some reasons. And, and the idea is that you, they can do an investigation where they can create this mesh aggregation network in place uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to allow for uh, uh, instantaneous or dynamic offloading uh, of, 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 of services from one edge location to the other. Um, some of the roadmap stuff in there, and I'll, and I'll uh, complete this up, is, is that the, um, the work area, again, has a significant body of work in the publication cycles right now. Uh, there's currently actually uh, five or six uh, working texts uh, that are in the, um, uh, the publication cycle uh, that will be produced uh, as technical reports in the first half of 2021. Uh, they also got the progress that we've talked about that are ongoing for the disaggregation of the, of the functions of the OLTs and the BNGs through, uh, you know, the various uh, specifications that are noted here. Those are kind of expected to be published, I would expect, sometime in the second half of 2021. Uh, there's some new specification support that will come into play for 436, uh, which is the automation framework uh, for, for monitoring and test. Uh, and then we're, we're going to start looking at these next, what is the next uh, issue, the next uh, generation of cloud CO publications that we have to work on. Uh, for OBBAA, which is an open source uh, reference implementation of the BAA layer uh, within cloud CO, they just did a major release in September or October uh, of this year. Uh, where we actually included new features that we demonstrated through the Broadband World Forum demonstration that had uh, control plane relays where you can do packet intercept and, and send it up to, uh, uh, to control planes to allow for dynamic uh, bandwidth steering if you wanted to. Uh, and then we also did virtual ONU management through uh, virtual OMCI. We took the WT451 specification and we uh, implemented it in the, um, uh, in the BAA layer and we're providing feedback to uh, the, the, the broadband forum on that particular specification. Um, and then we also have some standard adapters that allow white, box to, uh, white boxes to be implemented uh, in, in, um, in, in the BAA layer itself. Uh, for the releases, uh, for this upcoming year, we're continuing on some of the control plane relay uh, enhancements, as well as uh, since we fed back all this stuff to standardization for virtual MCI, they're, of course, going to change some stuff, and we're going to have to implement it as a reference implementation in support of PlugFX. So we'll do that. Uh, and then there's some work that we want to do within the BAA world of how do we deal with microservice or orchestration, uh, which we're dealing with the implementation of onboarding and integration of the microservices descriptions. And then uh, release five, we work in the, uh, the OBBA world uh, you, through the use of uh, the story team, uh, and a, uh, which, are, which are a lot of service providers uh, and a development team. And so the story team uh, and, and the developers got together and says, what do we want to try to do in 2021? And so we're looking at some, some new ways of doing some uh, network uh, uh, exposure northbound of the uh, BAA layer that allows for abstraction of the network uh, and, and the incorporation of uh, profiles. Uh, telemetry campaigns in, or, in order to support some of the work that uh, the BA layer would need to be as a managed entity and a decision element within the um, uh, within the 436 context, uh, the OAM context, uh, and then do some novel work uh, that we want to feed back to the uh, BBF for how we do ONU authentication, uh, microservice integration into a common data store, and then do a reference implementation of the of the SDN based fan support. So there's a lot of work that's happening in the BAA. It's a very active, uh, very dynamic environment. Uh, as the chair, I can barely keep up with these guys. So uh, that's what's happening in OBBA, and that's what's happening in SDN.